The English have always been famous for their sense of humor. This can be seen in all aspects of their life. Their persistence in living in such a tiny wet island. Their national games. Their history. Their traditions. And in their strange institutions. Even when their leaders go to Europe, a joke is never far away. But what exactly is characteristic of the English sense of humour? We asked Dr. Primula Steinwein, a famous author from Liechtenstein. How should I know? I am a foreigner. But fortunately, as a foreigner, she can find out by attending the Royal Institute of Applied Comedy, where Professor Asa Hartford and his team are about to give one of their lectures on the nature of English humour. Last week, I dealt with the origins of the joke from the simple loss of trousers jape through to the relatively sophisticated banana skin precipitation joke. Now, a variation of this joke was made possible by the invention of this piece of machinery. Here we see how its risible potential was cunningly exploited. Even greater hilarity was made possible, however, by the introduction by the Normans of the plank. Note the proportions and point of balance essential for humorous function. First, the simple side swipe or whop. Hey, Fred. An increment in mirth is affected by a simple variation known as the side swipe and return. Hey, Fred! And now the double side swipe and return. Hey, Fred! But even the risible sound of wood against skull cannot compare with the witty implications involved in the manual dispatch of an edible missile. It is generally agreed that the Byzantines first developed the dessert as a method of light entertainment, although it reached a peak of perfection in England during the Napoleonic Wars. First, the simple, straightforward deposit. Next, the simple sideways deposit. Third, the simple surprise deposit. Finally, the frustrated double deposit. We now move on to the more interesting but little known variant involving greater interpersonal complexity. Nominally designated the three course complex. One thing that seems characteristic of English humour is its utter predictability. One can always tell exactly what is going to happen, sometimes almost minutes before it actually does. Of course, sometimes the tension inherent in this type of situation can be quite funny. But I think it's true to say that on the continent, we prefer a less predictable type of joke.